Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you. We're learning a lot about new technology and, and where the controls are. Um, last I saw, there were 66 folks uh, on this Zoom meeting. So uh, again, uh, very pleased that we could make this happen this morning. Uh, not quite the same as meeting in person, but we're going to do our very best. Um, I come to you from a quiet campus. Even the admin classroom building construction is opt uh, with this a simple but important message, I'm very proud of you. Our North Central community has responded heroically to this generation defining event. We've stepped up for our collective safety and for the educational well being of our students. We'll strive to meet our mission of providing educational, accessible, and relevant higher education of and for the community, regardless of the circumstances. We'll continue to do this important work while being guided by the best understanding of what will save lives in the days ahead. What's more, we have supported our community during this pandemic by donating supplies and equipment to McLaren Northern Michigan, cooked meals for area residents in need, and 3D printed protective mask for evaluation by local infectious disease physicians, folks at McLaren again. If needed, we'll do even more. Many of you have supported the foundation's North Central Cares campaign, which will help our students who are facing immediate financial hardships caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. I echo Chelsea's sentiment. You make North Central a place of inspiration and caring, and I'm honored to call you my colleagues. Finally, this virus took one of our own. When the virus took one of our own, our shared grief at the loss of our friend, mentor, colleague, in many cases, an icon, a guy who represented so much of what, what, what makes North Central proud, show the unity of our North Central family. When we're able, we will gather to celebrate the life of Professor Larry Cummings and the many contributions he made to the college, to his students' lives, to our lives. In the meantime, please take advantage of the grief counseling available to North Central team members through the college's partnership with the professionals at Great Lakes Psychiatric. If you have questions about this, I'll feel free to le reach out to uh, our HR Director, Lynn Eckerly. Please know you're all at the top of my mind as we navigate these ever-changing circumstances. I can tell you a bit about how we've come so far and where we're headed. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, I encourage you to send me a note. Uh, as we go through today's presentation, uh, I invite you to uh, use the chat utility Please keeping track of that. We can answer questions uh, at the end um, or open it up uh, for people to ask uh, questions verbally as well. Thank you all for the adaptability you've already shown during these unprecedented times. Please continue to practice proper hygiene, good judgment, and be safe in the days ahead. Together we'll walk through this difficult situation and emerge even stronger and more resilient as a result. Thanks. Let me switch it to the uh, PowerPoint here for just a second. <clears throat> Again, have to find those controls. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, you to join me in just a moment of silence as we reflect on Professor Larry Cummings and what he meant to each and every one of us. We'll miss you, Larry. Please know that. All right, here's what we've got queued up for the day. Uh, I want to talk about how we've responded 
uh, are now preparing and fighting the current pandemic. Uh, what we're doing as an ins institution to adapt and adjust. Uh, we'll talk about enrollments, what we're seeing, um, what we hope uh, will happen. Uh, we can speak to funding and support as well, understanding uh, that mechanism and, and uh, what we believe uh, will happen moving forward. Got some good, exciting personnel updates, information on current postings. We'll talk a little bit about the future. I can give an update as well on the renovation project. And then I'll invite each cabinet member uh, to unmute and give a one minute, maybe 90 second update on what's happening in their area. And we'll, we'll take it from there. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And if I can find that button. So on March 12th, um, you know, things were ha happening very quickly. Uh, that week, the week of the 10th, uh, on the 12th, we, we decided that all external on-campus events would be canceled. Uh, among, among the first things uh, that went away, if you will, uh, or we, we decided to postpone the Northern Michigan Home Show, our lunch and lectures, right? Put all of that where external folks were coming to campus, put all that on hold. Uh, the next day, uh, we uh, made the decision to proceed with an extended three-week spring break. Right? We wanted to give ourselves some time to adapt and adjust, and more importantly, um, have the students return home, again, in the spirit of, of social distancing. Um, in hindsight, that, that proved to be a good call. Um, things really ramped up the following week, right? So by Thursday, March 19th, uh, we closed campus. Uh, it will remain so through Monday, April 19th. Uh, all the face-to-face -face classes, including labs and clinicals uh, at all campus locations will be delivered via remote instructional methods. It started on Monday of this week, now through the end of the semester. Uh, our dorms have been closed through the end of the semester and all on-campus events have been canceled and or postponed everything that we are planning to do through May 8th. So May 8th is the date uh, that was scheduled for commencement. Uh, we're still thinking and chewing and considering uh, how we best celebrate the accomplishments of this year's graduates, uh, again, in our, our current environment. All the while being careful and safe. So on the 23rd, Governor Whitmer issued the Stay Home, Stay Safe executive order that went in effect from the 24th through April 13th. It's my understanding that this afternoon uh, she will uh, extend that order. Um, it's uncertain the length of time that that will continue. Uh, if if I were a betting man, I'm guessing it will last through at least the end of this month and perhaps a bit longer. Um, we will wait and see um, what the best minds at the state level believe we need to do uh, and respond accordingly. Um, we'll adapt and adjust our plans, which are now to return on April 19th <coughs> to that new reality. Excuse me. So again, uh, stay tuned for an announcement from the governor's office this afternoon as to an extension of the executive order. <coughs> March 25th, details about the Families First Coronavirus Response Act were shared out to all faculty and staff and really um, what this is about are protections for folks who are caring for those with coronavirus, uh, caring for children who've been sent home uh, to prevent uh, the spread of coronavirus. I think there are six categories in total. Uh, if you have coronavirus yourself, again, uh, protections uh, for employees. And so uh, you have that information. Again, if you have questions, uh, reach out to Lynn Eckerly. Uh, also keep your supervisor or manager 
uh, in that communication loop so that everybody knows what's going on. Um, we've had a lot of fun learning new technology, right? How to, how to conduct a meeting like this via Zoom. Uh, Campus-wide communications, uh, been sending emails. Um, we've also been posting updates on the coronavirus page. Again, if you go to the main page for North Central, the yellow bar just below the scrolling photos at the top, uh, hit that link uh, to get the latest news. Um, let me explain the uh, series of photos on the right. We had a Zoom campus uh, cabinet uh, meeting yesterday, all from our homes. And you can see Tom Zadel sinking lower and lower and lower into the couch as that uh, a meeting went on for uh, just a couple hours. So uh, uh, we're trying to make the very best of it. Um, again, continue to report to your manager or reach out to HR with questions as we move forward. Um, and I'll mention this here and I'll mention it uh, at least one other time. So it's important that we try to adapt and adjust uh, to, to the realities of our world, uh, meet the students where they are. Uh, we've done that this semester by moving to remote instructional methods and made the decision that summer courses uh, will also be delivered uh, using those remote uh, instructional methods, think online. Um, again, what we hear, what we understand is that students are very, very reluctant to return to face-to-face uh, -face instruction at this time. Um, uh, certainly, it's really hard to do a number of things uh, when that isn't the case uh, in terms of instructional pedagogy, uh, but, but we're going to do our very best to adapt and adjust. And again, I appreciate the work that's, that's happened thus far. So uh, th there are a lot of things up in the air right now. What's the recognition T going to look like? What's PTK induction going to look like? Uh, nurse pinning. Commencement 2020. Do we postpone these events? Might it be possible to have them in June? Um, once you get into July and August, you've kind of turned the corner and the focus is on the start of the school year. Would we be better off um, developing a, a virtual and delivering a virtual commencement this year? And, and what would that look like? So those are some of the questions that are, are in discussion right now. Uh, we also have to think about uh, moving forward, right? We've got rooms in the residence halls that are rented out uh, in the summer. Uh, in many cases for um, folks on the front line, summer employees. Uh, in other cases, we host a group from Ohio, um, a group of, of uh, I'll say a church camp students come on up. Uh, how do we safely get <coughs> the belongings of our current residents out of the dorms, get them cleaned. Uh, can we host a group like that? Uh, would there be reasonable social distancing? Uh, I'll, I'll, w w there's a lot, a lot in the mix right now uh, to be considered. Or do we simply pull the plug on all of that, uh, leave the, the residence hall vacant uh, in the summer and plan to start anew in the fall? Um, we have a number of other summer events and activities. Uh, I know the Harry Potter uh, summer camp for students. You know, anything that we had planned in person, uh, we've either got to do that virtually or, or consider canceling uh, for this summer. Um, and lots and lots and lots of other um, decisions to be made here along the way. How we've been assisting uh, in that fight, uh, what we've done is to provide supplies and equipment from HESC. Uh, I'll give a shout out to Jamie Poggles, uh, Jim Cousineau, um, Pam, uh, lots of other folks coming together uh, to, to get that needed uh, equipment over to the hospital. Uh, uh, NCMC is working hand in hand. Again, I mentioned uh, in my initial remarks, the PPE uh, mask, uh, prototyping that in the CNC lab, uh, 3D printing actually, uh, 
and and uh, with with uh, a particular prototype identified that works best, uh, we can move to mass production of those those masks uh, if and when needed. Uh, pleased to share as well that the college is providing meals uh, to comfort keepers and their clients. Uh, thank you to Laura and and uh, your crew. And if needed, uh, we will certainly do even more. Uh, we've offered up space on campus uh, to McLaren. Right now, the SCRC is, is sitting idle. Uh, if there would be storage needs or uh, other means by which uh, overflow, hospital overflow, that's something we would consider doing, or accommodations in our, in our residence hall uh, for folks uh, working in that community. So um, when asked, we're stepping up and I'm, I'm really pleased uh, that folks uh, are doing so. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the CARES Act, Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security. Uh, that's a, a federal uh, initiative. It was signed into law end of March so it's also known as Stimulus 3, $2 trillion uh, stimulus package. Uh, and so I think many or most of us will be receiving a check uh, directly to our bank account or in the mail uh, in an effort to give our economy a shot in the arm. Other components of this act are the, the uh, payroll protection component, um, short-term low interest or no interest loans to small businesses, uh, just a, a number of components. And there's relief as well for higher education, um, including community colleges. Uh, we expect uh, to receive from that about $900,000, half of which uh, is to be directed to students. So to put this in perspective, that amounts to about 6% of our overall budget. Uh, we're gonna have obviously losses in terms of summer enrollment. Um, we need to uh, conservatively plan for a reduction in state aid, even this year. Uh, so things aren't you know, locked in with absolute certainty are, are funding sources. However, um, the good news is we, we've, we've been solid to this point, uh, look to may, remain strong uh, through the end of this fiscal year, and we're working in earnest to queue ourselves up uh, appropriately for, for our next uh, year of operation. Uh, so again, some money coming from the federal government uh, that will uh, likely offset uh, some of the losses short term that we'll see. Uh, know that half of that money uh, needs to be directed to students and we're, we're keeping track of, of how uh, we best go about uh, doing that and the things that we're already uh, doing in that regard. So faculty and support are working in earnest to uh, help our current students uh, in this transition, thank you all, right? We're teaching via remote instructional methods, finishing out this spring semester, uh, planning to do so in the summer. And it is prudent for us to realize that we may either have to operate in that mode in the fall or at least start the fall semester in that mode. Uh, there remains significant uncertainty uh, I'm pleased that it looks like the curve is flattening in places like New York and Detroit. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet. And the worst thing that we could do is jump right back into the social interaction uh, that, that really accelerated uh, the, the spread uh, of the virus before. And so we're gonna think thoughtfully and carefully about how we best move forward. Um, we also had a, a push uh, underfoot uh, to, to take a significant step with online education for the fall. Uh, and so that may prove now to be uh, quite fruitful. 
uh, that, that that was underway. Uh, student survey, we've surveyed our students to identify their technology needs, whether that be internet access or hardware, laptops, um, tablets, uh, to get that, uh, those resources distributed. Uh, we verified and or boosted the wireless uh, in the parking lots at all NCMC locations. So we tested it in Sheboygan. Uh, we've tested it out uh, at our Gaylord location uh, here in Petoskey. Uh, it's the, the library, uh, the, the parking lot immediately to the west of the library uh, where, where we've uh, set that up for students uh, staff, faculty uh, to use uh, pending, pending their need. Um, I know that the faculty uh, have met virtually uh, regarding best practices, uh, ideas, support uh, as we work through this, this transition. Uh, we've made the decision initially, a decision was to pay student workers uh, through spring break, the two weeks prior. Um, we're going to take that a step further uh, in an effort to address uh, financial concerns, issues, needs. Um, student workers are now going to be compensated through May 8th, uh, the end of the semester, uh, for the hours that they were scheduled to work. Um, we want to do all that we reasonably can uh, to help folks uh, in this time of need. So that information has been shared out uh, with supervisors of student workers, but, it, but I want everybody to know uh, that we're taking that step. Uh, the other step that we are taking uh, with respect to our students uh, is, is issuing a 7 16th refund of room and board. So there were seven weeks left in the semester um, when, when we went on our, our three week extended spring break. 50% uh, of the room a refund was issued prior to spring break. We thought folks would be, hope, we had hoped folks would come back and be able to pick their stuff up. Um, that's not gonna be the case. So 50% uh, uh, then will be credited to, to students' accounts uh, next week. Uh, and so that's 100% refund of what was left, what was remaining in the semester. Uh, and again, 7 sixteenths of, of meals or board as well. And the security deposit will be returned once, once student belongings are retrieved. So um, we're trying to do right uh, by the students again and, and, and help them out in this time of need. <clears throat> so what are we doing to support future students through this transition? Uh, a number of things, creating online orientation, Right. Uh, also working with our dual enrolled early college um, placement testing. Some decisions have been made there and thank you all for your flexibility uh, in this unprecedented time. We want to remove hurdles at this juncture um, and, and help students who've decided that education will be important uh, for them to leave their mark on this, this world. Uh, allow, them, allow them to take that step. Uh, and become a student. We've modified the application and acceptance uh, process. Again, thanks to all for your flexibility. Um, unprecedented times, uh, in many cases, require unprecedented measures. Um, we will be prudent uh, with, with what we choose to do uh, as we move forward. Um, but again, I think uh, reaching out at this time is, is of critical importance. And I wanna thank everybody. I know folks are, are helping others, maybe stepping outside of what they might typically do. And I know you're all doing it in a, in a new uh, mode or, or means, uh, not unlike this Zoom presentation. So uh, thank you for your, for your adaptability uh, to our needs today. All right, I'm trying to find my cursor in that next slide. So we are closely tracking and have been closely tracking both applications, having done that since about November, and uh, registration or enrollment. Um, I think Bob, 
for developing uh, this spreadsheet. I know it's a little tricky to read. Uh, there are six quadrants, right? Liberal arts in the upper left, business marketing, accounting, upper right, nursing allied health in the middle, uh, other occupational uh, disciplines, personal interest, and dual enrolled students. Again, dual enrolled, typically those students are in liberal arts. We just wanted to get some better definition of, uh, of what we were seeing uh, in those specific categories. Then you can see uh, we have a total number um, of accept accepted uh, students or total number of applications, I'm sorry, uh, accepted, pending, first time in college, uh, you can follow through that. And if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see uh, a, a summary, a listing of applications accepted, who's pending, uh, the percent accepted, the head count, right, bodies, people, individuals enrolled, a, percent, uh, a percentage of applied uh, to enrolled, and the contact hours enrolled. So. Uh, that's one means by which, which we're keeping a very, very close eye on what's happening uh, for summer and fall. So what you can see uh, here is a graph of applicants for, uh, and I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, fall 18 in red, fall 19 in green, fall 20 in blue. Um, Here's the good news, right? Uh, the blue line was really starting to take off. We were getting a significant number, greater number of applicants uh, for fall 20. And, and you can see the spot uh, right about here in the middle uh, where that, that increase begins to, to turn over or kind of, kind of tail off. And now we're headed back uh, to what we've seen in previous years. We definitely want to keep a close eye on that. We'd like to keep this blue line climbing and climbing at a faster rate than it had the previous two years. Uh, my hope is that folks kind of settle in uh, and start to think about the future and what will be next in their life and this world uh, so that we can, uh, I'll say, you know, return to normal and, and serve those students to the greatest extent possible, both summer and fall semesters. Um, here's another uh, slide. So we began enrollment earlier in March, right? That's why the blue line starts so far to the left at the bottom. And, you know, we get some pretty good indication of what's going to happen uh, that very first week. But unlike the green and the red, which you can see uh, climb uh, pretty at, at, a, at a fairly steep slope from that that first week on the slope this climb of the blue line really has, has tailed off or stalled and so uh, we've got to think about you know what if our fall enrollment is down 10 percent what if it's down 25 percent what if it's down 50%? Um, don't believe that'll be the case, uh, but we do have to think about uh, various uh, possibilities. So this is, again, this slide is new applicants and uh, it's, it's head count on how many have, I'm sorry, uh, it's contact hours in terms of how many uh, have what we're seeing in the way of enrollment compared to our previous falls. All right, these now, the next couple are head counts. So this is summer 2019 versus 2020. Summer 2020 is the red line. Here's where we wound up, right, with right about 500 students uh, enrolled for the summer. Uh, again, uh, it's contact hours that translate into dollars. So. Uh, this may not be the best measure, but uh, the other graphs were very similar uh, in, in their look, um, in their trends, uh, and in, in my head, it's easiest to count bodies or heads. So you can see what we're seeing for 2020 right now, again, is, is this 
number of students that have enrolled for the summer has really uh, tailed off. A nice, a nice bump here, and I think this is when we begin uh, reaching out uh, to potential students. And I think what we're hearing is uh, it's an uncertain time. You know, yes, I might enroll, but I'm not ready to make that decision yet. So uh, we'll continue to work really hard uh, to, to with that reach out and uh, I'll invite and, and ask everybody to do what you can uh, and we'll, we'll do our very best. So that's summer. Uh, here's fall uh, enrollment. And so you can see we were tracking similarly, right, with the number of, of current and new students uh, enrolling. Uh, and this is days before the semester starts. So we can compare apples to apples and you can see how the enrollment uh, has fallen off for roughly the past month. Um, we're keeping a very close eye on this as this is a key uh, parameter as we work to develop the budget for this coming year. So uh, again, we'll, uh, I'll review and, and remind where we are. Uh, back in February, our Board of Trustees approved a 3.2% tuition increase. Uh, for the fall, we thought that made a lot of sense uh, in terms of, of uh, what the state, uh, what the governor was planning and, and legislature in terms of appropriation, uh, where we were on expenses, uh, keeping cost in check uh, for our students. Uh, so we felt, you know, good about um, where that would, would put us. Again, for this year thus far, FY20 or 1920 uh, fiscal year, uh, things have held, held solid uh, to this point. The question marks moving forward are summer enrollment. The good news is that's not a big chunk uh, of our budget for the year. It's, 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 it's all important, but it's, it's not a huge chunk. Um, and, and uh, state dollars. Will they uh, stick to their appropriation and or their commitment uh, to the college for this fiscal year? Uh, as we look to, to next fiscal year 21 or academic year 2021, um, you know, there, there are a number of, of pieces in question and, and we're budgeting importantly. And, and I've listed here the COVID-19 impact. So let me speak to the four pillars, right? Uh, we get revenue four different ways, primarily. Uh, county tax, right? Uh, property tax, again, about 40% of our revenue uh, each year. Uh, tuition, auxiliary enterprises, right? That's another 40%. And our state appropriation uh, is typically uh, about 20%. That's out of a budget that uh, is somewhere between 16 and $17 million. The fourth pillar, fundraising, uh, is what enables and allows us to move forward. So um, county tax, fairly solid, you know, typically stable or increasing but there have been years where it declines and the timing of those payments to the college uh, is also important. Tuition, right? When we look at the number of students who will be attending, this is a big component. This is, this is a, a piece that we've talked about a lot um, and meeting our mission uh, really is about how many students we can effectively educate. Um, I won't make any bones about it, however, uh, it, it also strongly impacts the institution's budget. State appropriations, uh, this is a, a big question mark, right? Right now the forecast, and, and you've probably read this in the news, uh, is for um, uh, a reduction in tax revenues to the state of a, anywhere between one and three billion, B as in boy, 
billion dollars, maybe four, but let's say it's one to three, uh, three billion dollars out of a $60 billion budget is a 5% reduction in revenues for the state. States are required to balance their budget, unlike the federal government, right? And so there are some things that they can touch and other areas of the budget that they, their mandates, they might be federal, uh, it might not be easy to make reductions uh, in certain areas. Um, you know, when you think about prisons, how are you gonna cut money from that system? And, and, and there may be a need to, uh, but, but that winds up being, being very, very tough uh, to pull money out of, out of corrections. Um, so we need to be prepared uh, for an adjustment uh, in terms of, of our state appropriation. We need to respond uh, to a potential reduction in tuition revenue. Now, this is all, I hope, short term. And we want to be positioned and prepared and ready when this turns around you know, dramatically, and if history repeats itself, that's likely to be the case, uh, recognizing the value and contribution that each and every employee uh, makes to our institution. So uh, there's a lot, there's a lot, um, a lot of unknowns. Uh, there's a lot in, in, in the mix right now, uh, and we're working in earnest uh, to, to make sure that uh, we do our very best to get it right. All right, on to the next slide. Some more uh, uh, good news to share. Uh, very pleased that Mary Muma, uh, an, uh, an alumna of North Central, uh, will be joining us, uh, even if that's virtually. Uh, we will have her as a resource uh, come April 20th. She's gonna uh, step into the counselor advisor uh, role uh, and given all that's, that's happening in our world, uh, I feel very fortunate uh, that we'll, we will be bringing someone with this uh, skill set aboard at this time. And then uh, a little uh, couple weeks out uh, yet, Kendra Lake uh, will begin her service uh, as the library director. Uh, she has a, a background uh, in OER. Uh, and, and so I think her skill set will also help uh, in this time of delivering uh, via remote instructional methods and ultimately, you know, our push uh, to more effectively deliver on online courses and programs. So, so that's good stuff. The right hand side of this slide is a listing of, uh, of positions that are currently open. Um, some of these are critical. Um, we need to move forward as we're able uh, to fill the positions uh, and we will um, with the approval and blessing um, of, of our trustees. Uh, we wanna be careful um, as we look at, at revenues and expenses, um, we, we need to make good, prudent decisions, all the while uh, meeting institutional needs, right? It's, it's, it's hard to make uh, a strong push into our digital world um, without the vision of an IT director, right? Or somebody in that role. Similarly, our digital content analysts to know how effectively we're reaching uh, prospective students, current students. Um, a number of the positions are funded uh, via grant with the little Travers Bay Band. So that's the mechatronics instructor, the career development specialist. Um, and, and we have some vacancies. Uh, I think most know that Courtney Swiss um, departed about six weeks ago, maybe eight now. And, and we need to make sure that that 
post uh, gets replaced. So um, I've got at the bottom of the list, instructional designer. Excuse me. With, <clears throat> with again, a push to deliver more content, either courses or programs online, uh, where and how does that fit into the mix at this time? So these are discussions uh, and action uh, currently being had. I will mention uh, just uh, quickly a few more things. So with that uh, digital migration, right, our view book uh, now uh, is wholly online. Uh, maybe after uh, this Zoom meeting, uh, Carol, if, if you could send that out uh, to everybody on campus and, and folks who get it, if you know somebody who might benefit from seeing it or receiving it, uh, let's, let's shout it to the hills. Uh, let's, let's spread that around so folks know that we're here and uh, uh, the great opportunities students have when they study in North Central. Uh, we've developed uh, backgrounds. I know this is just my office, but uh, we've got some fun backgrounds you can use uh, when Zooming. Uh, those are available through uh, CCD as well. Uh, think about social media and getting views. Uh, how, how that can promote our visibility during this time, uh, as well as the utilization of Facebook. So some other things listed here, sharing photos, sharing ideas, opportunities. Uh, think about what you can do uh, to support the visibility of the college uh, during, during these days. So an update on the admin classroom uh, building renovation. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll maybe best say this by saying it's been a wild ride. Um, since we've last spoken, the House and Senate both approved uh, the supplemental appropriation. Uh, then that, that got held for about two weeks uh, by the governor as she watched the coronavirus situation developed. Uh, there were a significant number of line item vetoes in that supplemental appropriation bill. That bill included our final approval for this project, right? A no cost capital outlay scope adjustment. The good news to share is that we survived those line item vetoes. We were one of four no cost capital outlay projects to be approved. Now the state had approved this project two times previously, once in June of 2018, at $6.8 million, and once in December of 18 at $7.4 million. This was a reaffirmation of that $7.4 million approval utilizing our current design. And that's now to have a student services first stop at the west end of the main floor of the admin classroom building versus a one stop where everything would move up uh, into this building. Uh, again, I don't know if you can see my cursor, uh, but this is a, is a graphic, a schematic of what the west end of the building will look like. So what happened was uh, we closed campus on the 19th. The subcontractors were able to work that following week um, and, and got a lot done. Uh, in fact, a lot more done than they expected because nobody was around. Um, didn't have to work around uh, either faculty or staff or students. So they made good progress, not, un not unlike what they had planned for spring break. Um, the stay home, stay safe order went into effect. Uh, they had to stop their work, uh, but again, had made good progress. In the meantime, the state budget office uh, has finalized the, the paperwork uh, that, that needs to be signed and that's back to them. Uh, we expect approval to release bid package two. There are two parts to the project, bid package one, uh, was underway and that's the work they were doing. Bid package two is for the remaining and completion of the project. Uh, we expect to get authorization for that 
yet this week, certainly next. <clears throat> and then it's full steam ahead. What we'll do at a point uh, is provide a three or four day window for faculty and staff who have offices uh, in this building to come in and get whatever you need for the summer and then basically uh, close the building down, close access to the building down until it's complete, which is expected now uh, late summer, probably July 30, August 15 timeline. Um, you know, if there would be a dire need, you for just remembered and forgot that one thing, well, we can accommodate that, uh, but we'll let you know when that window is gonna be, and then we're gonna turn the building over uh, to, to the construction uh, folks uh, and work in earnest to get this done. So um, in the background, uh, even with the coronavirus pandemic happening, uh, I'm pleased to share that, that we continue to uh, move forward on this project. So that's the news on ADCL. Now, let me see if we can make this part work. Chelsea, if you could unmute, or Leah, if you could help me unmute Chelsea. Can you guys hear me? For a minute or so. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. All right. I uh, just want to give a quick shout out to Caitlin and Laura and Heather. Um, saw they were some little tykes and uh, some fur babies that wanted to join the party. And uh, it makes me really happy to see that other people <laughs> have that too. Uh, I, can, uh, I can relate. So adds a certain amount of uh, frustration and levity to uh, professional Zoom meetings. So that's <laughs> um, just want to give a quick update uh, on the foundation. Obviously, we kind of put some of our normal stuff on pause so that we could um, pull together the North Central Cares campaign uh, with the help of CCD uh, and their team. And, you know, these are pretty uncertain times for a lot of things, but including fundraising, um, we just weren't sure um, what people's ability and inclination to give would be, but um, but so far we are thrilled uh, to see that we already have um, 24 gifts, almost $3,400 raised in just the first couple days of this campaign, um, which is all online. So uh, again, something, something new for us. Um, but uh, we plan to do a pretty heavy push uh, through April 20th for um, gifts to the Student Emergency Fund um, and hope to raise quite a bit more uh, to help in that regard. So um, for those of you who have shared posts on Facebook or shared uh, an email with your friends, made a gift, uh, in some cases all of the above, I just wanna say thank you. Um, it's been a huge help. Um, and, uh, and just keep in mind too, for those of you in contact with students, just to remind them that the Student Emergency Fund is available. Um, you know, and Student Services is really standing by with a lot of resources um, to help and we're committed to um, working with donors to provide funding however we, however we can. So um, just wanna say thank you and we'll keep you posted on how the rest of the campaign goes. Excellent, thank you for that report, Chelsea. Renee, if you could unmute and share from your area. Yes, can you hear me? We can. All right, well, good morning to everyone. And um, our group is at work, at home, and they are all doing all their jobs as best as they can. Um, I wanna give a shout out to them. First of all, they're very dedicated and they are keeping students first and foremost um, in front of everything. Leon is working with students that may have left things in the dorm that they need, such as books um, or things like that. So um, if there are students that need that, we get that, in, that we, we get that to them, so Leon works through that. The Outreach and Engagement Group is working on the students that are currently applying for the summer and fall to try to get them into students that we can register. The advisors are working very hard at contacting our current students so that we can get them enrolled for the fall semester. Um, financial aid and the records departments, they're doing business as usual. We're doing verifications. As we receive information, the verifications are being done. And so we're not skipping a beat. We're 
servicing our students as we always service. And I want to do a shout out to Lori. She's there answering the phones as the phone calls come in. And it's very important that we are here to service the students as they ask the questions and ask for information. Um, the campus cupboard is ongoing. We have not had a lot of requests, but know that that is available. Students can order that online and they can pick it up. We open it up from two to four every Friday. Thank you, Leon, and the rest of the group for organizing that and making sure that we have social distancing as people pick that up. Um, the Student Emergency Fund, we've gotten quite a few requests. We are helping students out in regards to that and know that if um, anybody has any students that are having a hard time, please make sure that um, you send them that direction. Any person from student services can help in getting the paperwork that is needed for the students to fill that out. So again, thanks for everybody's help and especially for my crew. Thanks for the hard work. You're always there when I'm asking you questions and I appreciate it. That's it, David. Thank you very much, Renee. Uh, we'll move on to Pete. And uh, for those who aren't terribly familiar with Zoom, you know, you can put a different background behind you. Uh, and and uh, I'll point out that Pete is coming to you from the Alcatraz prison uh, out in San Francisco Bay. So uh, Pete, we appreciate that sense of humor. <laughs> Thank you, David, you yeah, stole my uh, you stole my thunder. You never know when you take these photos, how they're gonna have use down the road, I guess. So there you go. This is mostly going to be shout outs from my area. First, just a very personal one. Thank you to everyone who's, who's shared condolences about Larry. Um, it's a tremendous loss and, and thank you all for pulling together words you've shared with me and with each other uh, as we go through this. Thank you. Thank you tremendously for that. Um, I, I suppose the, the person I need to, to single out the most is, is uh, doesn't have the meerkat background up this morning with her crack team of, uh, of meerkat assistants in the background, but it's Melanie Lever who is, who somehow managed, I think, to, uh, to think ahead uh, about this sort of situation and had an awful lot of stuff. Oh, there they are, the meerkats are back. Great. Um, had an awful lot of things sort of planned and ready to roll out and it's made this transition, I think, far, uh, far more painless or far less painful than anybody would ever have imagined. So I've got a sh big shout out to Melanie, so thank you for that. It seems like every time I sign into Brightspace, I see something new that she's put up, uh, resources for faculty, resources for adjuncts. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff there. So I encourage you to check back as much as you can. Um, I've also got to single out Sarah, Jim, Michelle, Chuck, Jamie, Christy, uh, the deans, the associate deans. They're doing a tremendous job of filtering stuff before it ever gets to me or to Renee. Um, we're doing all we can do to knock down the problems that, that appear as they can, and these communication channels are critically, critically important. And so thank you for that. Uh, thanks for all the tremendous creative thinking on all these things. A special shout out. Um, I don't see Tim must not know how to get the meerkats in his background here. Tim, no meerkats? Um, sorry. I want a special shout out to Beth uh, Lieberman and Sarah Zarnick and Tim and Ernst and Travis and Alex. They've just done a spectacular job of helping us get technology and technology access to our students. Uh, Beth and Sarah thought their way through this wonderful distribution process for laptops out of the library. It's, it's incredible. So thank you very much for all the hard work you guys are putting in for this out of the box thinking. Chet, I know you're gonna watch this on a recording at some point. That was me that cut out there, Chet, not you. Um, thank you, sir, for all your help in the last week as well. That's all I've got. Thanks to everyone. It's been heartwarming to see how folks have pulled together to, to make this change. This, thank you, Pete. Finance and facilities, Tom, can you give us an update? Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I would like to thank everybody in my area, all the people who are performing essential frontline tasks to uh, keep people running, keep the, keep the place running. Um, I won't mention names, I'll, I'll forget somebody, but uh, we have uh, people keeping our, our technology infra infrastructure going, uh, keeping our uh, buildings running, even though that there's no one in there. Um, we're getting mail picked up. Um, 
when we talk about uh, continuing to pay students, um, it takes some of your colleagues to actually make that happen. Um, so we've got uh, people uh, uh, working to uh, keep students paid, keep us paid. Um, so I, again, thanks for everything. That's all I have. Thank you for that report, Tom. Uh, Bob Marsh, could you share a little bit more about uh, what's happening in your area? Uh, can people hear? Am I, am I unmuted? You're in good, good shape. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> well, as Dr. Finley alluded earlier, I've been working a lot with the student services, just really keeping a, a really close eye on both uh, summer and fall applications and summer and fall enrollments and trying to, uh, trying to help them identify the students that really need to be contacted, those that are at various places along the pipeline between application and actual enrollment. So uh, working with that and trying to, trying to help them out doing that. Uh, some federal filings, despite the coronavirus, uh, <laughs> the feds continue with uh, what we need to file, but they've been pretty understanding and we're still uh, chipping away on a few more of those before we can wrap those up for the year completely. Uh, and really since the uh, end of this semester will be upon us before we really know it, uh, I've started just doing a little, little of the prep work to get ready for uh, considering nursing program applicants and uh, helping now Jay and uh, Jamie just try to put those all together so we have a good picture of who's applied and who's, uh, who's eligible to apply so that we can move forward with that come, uh, come after the semester ends sometime this summer, I suppose. Although. I'll defer to Jamie, that could change, but at least um, trying to lay the groundwork for that right now. And uh, those are the main things that are going on in my world. Super, Bob. Thank you very much. We appreciate your efforts. Uh, last but certainly not least, Carol Lanen, can you share what you and your crew have been uh, doing at this time? It's good stuff. Sure. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, as everyone's been doing, sound like a broken record, but I do want to do a, a huge shout out to my dynamic duo of um, Megan and Catherine. Um, it seems to me that um, along with a lot of the rest of us, they're available 24-7 and we've been scrambling to get a lot of communications out and they've been doing an amazing job. Um, what I'll do is maybe touch on a few highlights and I'll go from earlier things up to the most current. So what we decided to do with social media posting, um, specifically looking at Instagram and Facebook, is we wanted to make sure that we started to get encouraging messages out there through social media, um, trying to lighten it a little bit. And a uh, huge shout outs go to um, a lot of our faculty who were nice enough to take pictures of them that we can put out on social media. And we really appreciate the support we've been getting. Um, we've been working with the outreach and engagement group. Um, we talked about the digital view book, but we've also done um, a digital orientation packet. And then as Dr. Finley mentioned, we do have the North Central Zoom backgrounds. There are six of them that we, re we created for our recruiters. Um, and anybody wants that, just give me a shout out and I'll be happy to send them out. As you probably have already seen, we created a, an NCMC social distancing logo, again, trying to keep things relatively light, but yet keep reminders out there to folks. Um, we took out um, on the Petoskey News Review, we have the front page of the Saturday, April 4th edition with an ad from the college. We created a couple of weeks ago, a 35 second video and that was posted to Facebook and Instagram. And the whole idea was that we are physically separated yet we're virtually connected. Um, we are working on the finishing touches for our Aspire um, communication. And that is a magazine type thing that I've talked about before. It's set for a late May publication. Um, we have also, as I mentioned before, launched a $30,000 enrollment ad campaigns. Those are on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, local television, local radio, OTT, which is the streaming content, and digital display ads. And um, all of this targets both regional and our downstate audiences. And those are the audience groups that our recruiters were going to try and get to, but 
as a result of this pandemic have not been able to. So we are reaching them digitally. The campaigns include information on our transfer to all of the institutions that we do flexible scheduling options and our new academic forgiveness. And then we've also thrown in some with the Up North Lifestyle campaigns. We are, as we mentioned before, working on a proposal for a virtual commencement ceremony um, to see what that would do um, in terms of giving us an option for doing something later on that would be in person. We have been assisting the foundation with the promotion of the North Central Cares campaign. Thank you everyone for making that as a success so far. And the most recent thing we did as of yesterday is that we have created a direct mail piece and sent it out to over 1200 high school seniors in our area. And it's um, the theme is close to home, but far from ordinary. And what we do with this piece is it touts the benefits of starting local. And if you complete just general ed courses that transfer to colleges, you can save about $38,000. And it's based on research that suggests that the, the COVID-19 pandemic is forcing students to rethink their college plans in favor of staying closer to home. So with that, I will um, end my presentation. Thank you. Carol, thank you very much for that report. It's good to, good to know all of the great things everybody uh, is doing across campus. Um, at this time, what I'd like to do is open it up for questions. Let me see if I can hit that cursor. Um, let's start with the, the chat utility. And if you have a question and, and you wanna type it into chat, uh, I have that up, Leah has that up. Uh, perhaps she can help direct traffic. Uh, and then um, once we're through that, uh, we can we can open unmute everybody and, and that'll get a little tricky, but uh, if there are other questions that folks want to ask at this juncture. Um, and again, let me say, you know, thanks for for what everyone uh, is doing uh, to keep keep the college at the fore and moving forward. And let me check with Leah to see if she, uh, do you want to unmute everything, Leah? Yep, I'm going to do that now. Okay. Yeah, okay. I hear some, uh, I hear some uh, young students go. out there. <laughs> Learning support services, this is joy. All right, Nikki. Oh, uh, you, what's that? So the question came in, once the uh, PPE 3D pro prototype is approved, can it be shared out to those of us who have a 3D printer at home? Uh, and the answer is, uh, I believe so. I don't know uh, if it's um, what restricted or, or held in propriety. I don't think um, it if, if it can be distributed, we will. Uh, it may or may not be able to be, be printed. We have, uh, as I understand, some, some large fast units here on campus, uh, but, but we'll, we'll share out what we can. Um, let me ask Kevin or, or uh, if you guys are online, do you have an update on that project? The, the masks were sent to McLaren and they're vetting them for uh, approval. And there, I don't think there's any uh, legalities of, of passing it around. It's, it was pretty open, I thought. Okay. So they're really, they're really simply working to ascertain which, it, which is the best design? Yes. Yes. And it's about Excellent. a nine hour. It's, one of them is a six hour print and one of them is like an eight hour. Print. So they are time consuming on a 3D printer. Got it. That's okay. My husband's planning on doing um, PPE anyway, but I'd like to have something that's approved for this area, not just the one that's floating around on the website. So okay. if it's possible. Yep. Once uh, McLaren gets back to us, we'll definitely get that out there. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Super, super. Leah sent out a note that everyone's unmuted at this time. Feel free to mute yourself if, if something's going on in the background. Uh, are there other questions?
just like a good professor, right? I want to give plenty of time. So uh, let me wrap up uh, with this. Let me wrap up with this then. Uh, know that uh, virtually my door is open, right? So feel free to reach out with, with again, email, text, call. Um, I have a note here from Emily. Please continue to use PAN referrals. Uh, she says that Joy and I and the advisors will be monitoring. You know, uh, we're, we're doing things a little differently now, but, but the resources that we've had uh, remain in place. Uh, let's do all we can in these next few weeks to support our students, uh, get to the end of the semester, and we'll take it day by day moving forward. Thanks again, everyone, and uh, I hope that you have a good, uh, joyful Easter weekend. Uh, and as we move into uh, other holidays, including Passover, uh, that, that, that uh, uh, is, is a meaningful and important time to observe as well. So thank you all. Have a, have a great weekend. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.